in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this liquid stretch effect using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up guys, Drool here back with another video and as you can see, this is the final output. So first of all, I'm going to go to file and open the photo that we're going to use. So click on the photo, open it and now we need to remove the background. So for that, I'm going to go here click and make sure that I have my object selection tool and if you don't have this option quick selection also works just fine after that let's go and make selection around the subject and it should do the job looks good however one problem if you zoom in real close is that it's a little bit farther than I want for that you can go to select modify and go to contract and here you can contract it by like five or six pixels. It depends on the resolution of your photo. So just try and see what works. Looks good. Now I'm gonna feather it a little bit so edge is not too sharp. For that again, go to select, modify, and then I'm gonna go and feather it like three pixels and hit okay. I'm happy with my selection. Then I'm gonna go and apply a layer mask. Now I'm going to go add a background and see how it looks. So for that, create new blank, uh, sorry, adjustment layer from here and select a solid. In the solid, I'm going to keep a white color for now and put it under my model. Now I need to fix the hair for the selection. For that, select your layer mask, right click and go select and mask. And here I want to fix this part. Let me zoom in so you can see properly. So this portion. For that, I'm selecting my second option here, it's my Refine Edge tool and then I'm just gonna paint here until it goes away. Looks good, hit OK. And to fix this little bit of fuzzy area, just get your brush tool and make sure you have black color and opacity is 100, right click, make sure it hardness is 0 and then you can just erase this portion. And you can also use your bracket keys to make the brush bigger or smaller or just right click, whatever. Another thing I want to do is make the photograph smaller. For that, just press Ctrl T and then just make it smaller and confirm it. Now let's add the another photo. So for that, you go to file and this time you go to place embedded. Select the second photo and then place it and confirm it. So using the same technique, I will remove the background and adjust the composition. I'm happy with the composition and how it looks. Now I'm going to go and put this photo underneath because I want this photo into the front and this one in the back. Another thing is I'm gonna crop it. So for crop tool, I'm using a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. You can just select the tool and type 16 here and 9 here and it will give you this ratio and just hit enter. So now it will confirm your crop tool and then you can adjust it around however you want. So I'm gonna keep it here. Now before we start, I'm just gonna make some backup of both of these layers. To do that, hold your control key and select both of these layers and press command J. So now you have a copy of both of them. Now take these both layers and put them under your background. So you just forget about them, you don't need them right now for the effects and now we start working here with this two, right? So I'm just, let's name it. So uh, I'm back on my left side and first thing I'm going to do is apply this layer mask. So right click and select apply layer mask and do the same for the right side. Right click and apply layer mask. So this doesn't allow because it's actually a smart object. If this happens, it's actually quite easy. Right click on your layer and there should be an option that says rasterized layer here. Now you can apply. So select the mask again, right click and apply layer mask. There you go. Now to make it less confusing, I'm gonna turn off eye of the right side and let's focus on the left first. Now on this one, we need to make it a smart object. So right click and select convert to smart object. Now we will apply liquify filter on it. So go to filter and then select liquify. So in the liquify, I'm gonna use only one tool. It's the first one. 
and here uh, my size is 600 and my pressure uh, is on 100 but it doesn't matter like you can mess around and see what works so I'm gonna go and start stretching it like this and when you stretch make sure that you don't do this or like just rush things out you need to make it like in a proper direction so in my composition the right guy is a little bit higher so I'm already trying to push it in that direction a little bit higher and I'm doing it with every single portion so give it like a nice curve that goes a little bit high Once you're happy, just go and hit OK. Looks good. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the right side. Looks good. Uh, let's confirm it. Now I know it looks like a mess right now, but <laughs> this is exactly what we need. Also, uh, here's the reason why we used uh, smart objects. So now if I want to change anything, I can just double click on any of this liquify. So I can go here, double click, and then immediately I can change whatever I want here. Uh, and then I can go back and do my thing. So let's start with the left side and I'm gonna go apply a layer mask and in the brush uh, I want to erase stuff so I will use black color with 100% opacity and 0% hardness and then make my brush bigger so as always I like to use bracket keys to make my brush bigger uh, it's more convenient and then you can start erasing like this and for this I'm gonna go and switch back to white color and it will allow me to paint it back and then you can use your X key to switch between colors to like black to erase and white to bring it back. So if you make a mistake, you can bring it back. If you want to erase, you can do it like this. And to make the blending a little bit smoother, another thing you can do is actually reduce your opacity. So I try to keep it like 20, 30 percent uh, and then in, uh, make sure you have black color and then start erasing so it will fade things out a little bit more gradually and I'm also gonna erase, uh, apply a layer mask on the right side here uh, and then erase this portion as well so first let's make the opacity 100 and change to black color and then I will erase the portions that I don't need so already the blend is kind of getting there uh, but I have a couple of problems uh, one this is not as curvy as I need so I'm gonna go back to my liquify uh, and here I'm gonna make my brush really large like really really large and then I will give it a bit more curve Now another big problem that we have is that the lighting in this photo was clearly different than this one, right? So it's quite like it's this too many shadows. To fix it, I'm gonna go and create new adjustment layer on top of my left side, this one. So create new adjustment layer and I'm gonna select curves and I'm gonna turn on a clipping mask. So now when I make any changes, it only stays on this layer, right? So I'm gonna make it bright okay that looks good and confirm it now in my mask when it's active I'm gonna press Control I so it will inverse everything we can't see anything but make sure you have your brush tool with white color make it a little bit bigger uh, and change the opacity to like 40 50 percent something and then you can just paint here with white color because we want to bring uh, that effect back right only in that portion so you can again uh, paint it and see how it looks so I think this one is like a bit too much so I'm gonna go back to my curves and okay that looks better and close it 
Now I'm gonna go back to my mask and play around with the opacity and blends until I get it as good as I want. Okay, now this looks good. And don't forget about the shirt. So for the shirt, I'm gonna make the opacity 100. And as you can see, there's this weird line here that I don't want. So I'm gonna go and just erase that portion. And it should blend without any problem. The shirt should be easy to blend. Okay, so looking good. Now I'm gonna add a gradient into the background because the white color looks a bit too simple. So activate your fill layer, this one, double click and you should have a gradient overlay option. So for the gradient, I kept it simple. Uh, select your gradient and here I used a gray color and a white color and then I pushed this slider, that's it. Uh, and the gradient style is radial so it's like a bright in the middle and darker on the edges and then I played with the opacity until it looked bright to me uh, so that's good and hit ok simple stuff and also I'm gonna move both of them to the right a little bit so I'm gonna select this hold shift and select all three layers including curves get my move tool and then you can move around and hold your shift key so if you do that you can move it in single line without like you know messing it up okay so this looks good once you are happy with everything right you can apply the final color correction stuff so for that uh, create a blank layer on top of everything then control alt shift and e press this four buttons together and it will create a snapshot of your document on a single layer. Then, uh, as always, right click and convert to smart object. Then go to filter and here select camera raw filter. In the camera raw filter, I'm gonna go and reduce the exposure a little bit. So I'm gonna keep it to minus one. And then I will start increasing highlights, shadows and all that stuff. and then i will add a bit of a texture maybe clarity let's see okay clarity works much better than the texture looks pretty good let's confirm it so this is uh, with adjustment without with without so uh, and as always it's a smart object so you can double click go back change whatever you want so that's pretty much it uh, this is how i created this liquid stretch effect it's quite simple technique and you can do a lot of interesting stuff with it so i hope you learned something from this video and if you did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions feel free to ask me in comment section below and if you want an update every time I upload a new video, you can subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. So that's it from me. I will see you next time. And till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.